Alrighty, lads. You clicked on it. You guys want to know what exactly was it like to be a human during the Blood Omen era? Well, you see, it was a time of uncertainty, a time of decay, a time where everything that used to be good is starting to go away. A time where what used to make sense no longer does. A time where what is a last attempt of humanity trying to wrestle control of their own fate in this world. There is hope, but there is also despair. There is concern, but there is also denial. This is the time of the Blood Omen era. It's a very odd time indeed. So, let's get into it. Why is it exactly like this? Why is it such a weird time period? Why is it so full of uncertainty? Time of unknown? Well, part of that has to do with the pillars. The pillars have been corrupted for over, you know, 20 years. And the world has just decayed. Now there's no more green trees. Everything's just more or less orangish to slightly swampyish green. It's no longer bright green like it used to be. Everything's just a weird thing. And then it's also kind of weird because humanity is united, which is a good thing, but they're united and their cities are still falling apart. It's like, it's such a weird time. How is it that everyone is working together? Everyone is fighting back the monsters and the vampires yeah, the cities are still being destroyed. The cities are still crumbling. And not only are the cities crumbling, but humanity's population is crumbling as well. And, which is, this is part of the really rough part, the people that are dying, there is no generation that holds enough hope to replace them. So what do I mean by that? Well... We visit one city known as Corhagen, and Corhagen's been hit by a plague that's apparently been sweeping the entire continent. Now what's interesting about this is that you notice that the entire city is pretty screwed. Everything is just full of corpses, and then whoever doesn't get the plague has to fight off the corpses of the plague victims as they rise up as skeletons or zombies. Now what's interesting about this is that it leads to a good, I would say, example. So. When we look at humanity in the past, we notice that humanity made these finely designed blades and armor. They're very uniform for their armies, like the Seraphan. But humanity during this time period, as we see in Soul Reaver 2, as we see in Legacy of Cain Defiance, we see that humanity has decayed. Now, most humans do not have a full suit of armor. They usually have leather, and they may have a unilateral sense instead of a bilateral sense. So, one shoulder will have a pauldron on it of just stacked plates of iron. Great! But then you look at his other shoulder and you notice it's completely naked, it's completely bare. This is what I'm talking about. And this shows in the city of Corhagen what I'm talking about. People who are civilians, people who more or less are the foundation of civilization and technology are dying and there is no replacing them like if the blacksmith dies along with his apprentice then who's going to be a blacksmith now who's going to have the education to forge weapons of this fine caliber no one and this is where the blood omen era is so odd people have to use dull rusty axes to fight off monsters and it's working, but they are noticing that their gear and their weapons are just not up to par. And this leads to new innovation, like we see with uh, Soul Reaver, uh, Soul Reaver 2 to be specific. That humans are starting to develop bombs and such like that, but you notice that they're still using heavily splintered, heavily rusted crossbows with these bombs. So it shows that they're trying to compensate for their degradation of equipment. So since their equipment is dying, they're now using more tribal ways of fighting. So if I am using a club to kill a vampire, I may as well have that club soaked in water, so now it's doing water damage. If I am fighting another human, I may want to rub some dirt on my weapon. And by having dirt on your weapon, you're now 
risking your enemy of getting a nasty infection. This is more or less an innovative step, but at the same time, it's not really much of an innovation in itself. Like, if you're hitting an opponent with rusty arrows that are going to splinter, like, sure, it's great that you're putting fire on the arrows, so now the vampire takes a lot of damage from the fire, but at the same time, you're trying to compensate for something that's already broken. That's not going to lead you down a good path. This isn't going to work. Eventually, it will break and leave you in a very vulnerable state. This is what I'm talking about. And this is where humanity's at a weird point. It's like, yes, you're killing the vampires down to just one vampire left in the entire world. Congratulations. You got rid of your predator. That is awesome. But at the same time, you don't have the proper buildings, you don't have the proper weapons, the proper armor to really fight off everything else, like the mutants, the demons, etc. So this leads to a very odd time where humans are constantly pondering what is next, what comes tomorrow. We fought one thing off, yes, but it took us a long time, a long time crusading to kill that. Now we have demons and monsters all around us and it looks like the pillars are about to fall and even if they do fall what happens next how are we going to deal with these threats as stated earlier with this being a time of decay things are starting to go away the big thing is common decency people are no longer being supportive of one another like Cain, he gets shuffled out of a tavern when it's late at night. He doesn't even get food or drink from the tavern. The guy just says, get out of here. I don't open for no man. And that's very interesting. Why are people so xenophobic now in this time period? Why are people so against their own humanity? This is quite easily answered by look at their heroes. Look at the people who are in the front lines fighting the vampires. Look at the people who are in the front lines keeping the monsters away from the city walls. These are thugs. These are bandits. Even Mobius himself talks about how it's a much more humble crusade, and we see why. These are people who will rob the very civilians that they're protecting. These are people who do not care about killing someone, and it turns out, oopsies, he wasn't a vampire. They don't care. They'll just take all of his belongings and then go ahead and rape his wife. They don't give a damn. This is your heroes. So... When we see people having those kind of heroes, it leads to people saying, okay, I don't care for my common man anymore. If you're around my house and it's getting late, I'm going to shoo you away. Whether it's through me bribing you to get away from me or whether it's me brandishing a weapon in your face to get you away from me. This is the time of the Blood Omen era. This is a time where although the monsters are being pushed back, The real monsters is humanity in itself. This is a very odd time frame, and it's a time that I find very unique because of how interesting it is. On one hand, humans are very hopeful because they're pushing back the monsters. Now they have a great crusade pushing against the darkness. But on the other hand, it's not a good crusade. Cities are crumbling, but not from the vampires, not from the monsters. They're crumbling from their own heroes. Their own pillar guardians are destroying their own cities. And then you have mutants that are coming from the pillar guardians destroying the cities. And you have plagues ravaging the land. The land is no longer suitable for farming. So it leads to this really weird time period where, hmm, on one hand, less monsters in the world. But on the other hand, the monsters are ourselves. And this is ultimately the Blood Omen era. I hope you guys have enjoyed. This has been Free to 700. I am out. Besides that, comment what you guys think. And as always, tell me what you more or less want to see down below. Besides that, I am out of here. Peace.